So here we want to evaluate the integral using substitution first and then using integration by parts. And we have the integral of cosine of the square root of x dx. Now in order to solve this integral, the first thing that we need to do, as the problem tells us, is use substitution. In other words, we're going to use u substitution as our first step to solving this integral. Now, typically we use u substitution when we want to integrate a composite function. A composite function being a function that has an inside function and an outside function. In this case, we have cosine of the square root of x. This is a composite function where the outside function is cosine and the inside function is the square root of x. Now, when we use u substitution, we typically set u equal to the inside function of that composite function. However, we usually also want to make sure that the derivative of whatever we set u equal to can also be found within the integral. But that's not going to be the case for this integral right here. If we set u equal to the square root of x, the inside function of this composite function, the derivative of the square root of x is nowhere to be found in this integral, right? All we have is cosine of the square root of x. So under normal circumstances, at this point, we would conclude that u substitution isn't going to be helpful here. However, it is going to be helpful in setting up this integral into another form that can then be integrated using integration by parts. All right, and so let me show you what I mean. Let's use u substitution and let u equal the square root of x, this part of our integral right here. And then what we want to do is take the derivative of u with respect to x. But before we do that, I'm going to rewrite the square root of x in a different way. I'm going to rewrite it like this. We'll have x to the 1 half power. The square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power. I'm rewriting it like this so that we can more easily see how to take the derivative of this function using the power rule for derivatives. Now we can see that we can multiply the exponent down and subtract 1 from that exponent. So the derivative du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x, will be equal to 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power. And then the next thing that we should do is multiply both sides by dx to solve for du. So if we do that, we'll have du is equal to 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power times dx. And now when we typically use u substitution, at this step right here, whatever du is equal to, we want to be able to find that within our integral. But as you can see, just like I mentioned earlier, the derivative of the square root of x, which is this expression right here, that's what du is equal to, 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power is nowhere to be seen in this integral. We have dx right here, but the rest of this is missing from our integral. Now that wouldn't be an issue if we were only missing a constant. We could just divide both sides by that constant. But since we have a function of x that we can't find within our integral, we have a problem. And so it's not entirely clear how we can rewrite this integral in terms of u, at least at first. What we can do here is rewrite this expression a little bit. I'm gonna move x to the negative 1 half power to the denominator of this expression. That will make the exponent positive. So if we do that, We'll have du is equal to 1 divided by 2 times x to the 1 half power times dx, right? Moving x to the negative 1 half power to the denominator changes this expression to be 1 divided by 2 times x to the positive 1 half power. That exponent is now positive. And we know from the beginning of this u substitution process that x to the 1 half power is the same as the square root of x. So we can rewrite x to the 1 half power to be the square root of x. All right, so I'm just going to do that right here. I'm going to rewrite x to the 1 half power to be the square root of x. And now we can do something pretty interesting. This function of x right here that we can't find in our integral, we actually know what the square root of x is equal to in terms of u, right? That was our original substitution. We let u equal the square root of x. So what we can do is use that substitution and rewrite the square root of x to be u. So if we do that up here, we'll have du is equal to 1 divided by 2 times u times dx. Now we no longer have a function in terms of x that we can't find in our integral. Now we have an expression in terms of u. But now what I want to do is move that to the other side of the integral so that we have all of our parts in terms of u on one side of the equation and dx on the other side of the equation. So if we multiply both sides by 2u, 
we'll have 2u du is equal to dx. Now we have an expression in terms of u that is equal to something in terms of x that we can find in our integral. We can now rewrite this integral in terms of u. We know that the square root of x is equal to u and dx is now equal to 2u du. And so let's make that substitution. This will be equal to the integral of cosine of u times 2u du. All right, so we replace the square root of x with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replace dx with 2u du because that's what we found that that was equal to. And so now this integral is in terms of u and we're almost ready to use integration by parts. But what I wanna do first is rewrite this a little bit. Notice that we can pull this constant multiple of two out to the front. And so let's do that. And I'm also going to reorder the multiplication here. I'm gonna have u times cosine of u. It doesn't really matter. I just prefer to look at the integral that way. So here's what we'll have. This is equal to two times the integral of u times cosine of u du. All right, so I pulled this two out to the front right here and I reordered the multiplication. So now we have u times cosine u instead of cosine u times u. And so now at this point, we no longer need the majority of this u substitution work. We just need to remember what our original substitution was because we're going to need that at the end of our problem to get our answer back into terms of x. So I'm going to remove the rest of this work and our next step is to use integration by parts. Integration by parts is an integration method that is useful when you wanna integrate a product of two functions or a product of two parts where one is algebraic and one is non-algebraic. Now that's not the only time that you can use integration by parts, but that's the most common use of it. And what I mean by algebraic and non-algebraic is an algebraic expression would be something like x squared or x, or in this case, since we're working with u, we could have u squared or u. All right, basically any part or any function that's not a trig function, it's not a logarithmic function, it's not an exponential function, or any other type of special function. It's just some algebraic expression that you would have worked with in algebra. All right, and so when you see that you have a product of an algebraic part and a non-algebraic part, such as a trig function like we have right here, integration by parts will be a helpful integration technique. And so here's how integration by parts works. The general formula is that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. Now in this case, we already used u as a variable, right? We used it in our u substitution process. So to avoid any confusion, let's not use u again. Let's use a different variable instead of u. The process will remain the same. We're just going to use a different variable. I'm going to replace u with w. So we'll have the integral of w times dv is equal to w times v minus the integral of v times dw. Okay, and here's what this formula is saying. This integral right here, the integral of w dv, this represents the integral we have right here. What we wanna do is rewrite this integral into these two terms, w times v minus the integral of v dw, which should be an integral that is easier to solve than the one that we're starting with, all right? And so since this integral corresponds to what we wanna solve, we need to determine what w is and what dv is. And typically we start by choosing w, or if you're using the general form, you would start by choosing u. We're just replacing u with w in this case. And so here's how we go about choosing u or choosing w. The easiest way is to use this acronym Y8, which is essentially just a priority list of what you should set equal to u or set equal to w when you use integration by parts. The priority list goes from the top down. So if you see a logarithmic part, you would wanna set that equal to u. Or if you don't see that, but you see an inverse trig function, then you should set that equal to u and so on. All right, it's just a priority list of what you should set equal to u or in our case, equal to w. And so what we wanna do is identify what we have in our integral, as I said earlier, we have an algebraic part of u and a trig part of cosine u. And so if you look at our priority list, algebraic comes before trig. And so we should set the algebraic part of our integral equal to u, or in this case, equal to w. And so if u is w, what that means is that dv will be equal to the rest of our integral, cosine u du. So w will be u, so I'll underline that and then write it down. W is equal 
to u, and then dv, that is going to be equal to cosine u du. So I'll underline that, and I'll write that down as well. dv is equal to cosine u du. Okay, and so now that we identify w and dv in our integral, what we want to do is use those values to set up these two terms that our integral will be equal to. But in order to do that, we need to find v and dw. And we can find those two values by taking the derivative of our equation for w and integrating dv. So here's what we'll have. We'll take the derivative of w with respect to u, that will be equal to one. The derivative of u to the first power is just going to be one. And then we can multiply both sides by du to find that dw is equal to du. All right, so that's dw. Now we found that, but we still need to find v, and we find v by integrating dv. So I'll take the integral of dv, which will be equal to the integral of cosine u du. Now the integral of dv is just going to be v, so we'll have v is equal to the integral of cosine u. And the integral of cosine is sine, so v is equal to sine u. Okay, so now we have dw and v and w and dv. We have all the values we need to set up these two terms that our integral will be equal to via integration by parts. All right, so here's what we'll have. And don't forget that we are multiplying this integral by two, so that two is going to be multiplied by both of these terms that we are saying that this integral is equal to. All right, so we'll have two times these two terms. So we'll start with w times v, and w is u, and v is sine u. So we'll have u times sine u. So let's write that down. We'll have u times sine u, and then we will subtract, right? We subtract the integral of v dw. So we're subtracting the integral of v, which is sine u times dw, which is du. So we'll have the integral of sine u du. All right, so I'll write in sine u du. All right, so now we've used integration by parts. Notice that we now have a simpler integral of the integral of sine u du, and we know what the integral of sine is. So we no longer need this integration by parts work. We can now just work on simplifying our answer. And so if we continue our work up here, the first thing I'm going to do is distribute this two through this quantity. So this will be equal to two times u times sine u minus two times the integral of sine u du. All right, and now we can integrate sine. The integral of sine is negative cosine. So this is equal to two times u times sine u minus two times the negative cosine u and then at this point, you should add your constant of integration plus c, all right? We do have an indefinite integral here. We don't have any bounds of integration or any limits, so we need to add a plus c to our answer, okay? And now, negative two times negative cosine u, those two negatives will cancel out to become positive. So this is equal to two u times sine u plus two times cosine u plus c. And now we're almost done. Our answer is now simplified as far as it can be in terms of u, but remember, our original integral was not in terms of u, it's in terms of x. So what we need to do now is substitute back what we set u equal to. So we're going to replace each of these u's in this solution with the square root of x, all right? So we're going to replace this u, this u, and this u with the square root of x, and then we will have our final answer. So this is equal to two times the square root of x times sine of the square root of x plus two times cosine of the square root of x plus c. That is the final answer to this problem. Two times the square root of x times sine of the square root of x plus two times cosine of the square root of x plus c is the integral of cosine of the square root of x dx. Okay, and so that's the end of this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you wanna see some more examples of using integration by parts, feel free to check out the video that I have linked here on the screen. Or if you wanna learn about some more topics in Calculus 2, feel free to check out my playlist that's also here on the screen that has all of my Calculus 2 videos that you might be interested in. All right, but with that, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.